Hey, everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here with Shannon. Hello. Hey, Christian. How are things going? Nice and cold here in Nashville. Uh, ready for a little bit of summer, hopefully nice soon. Nice and cold everywhere. But uh, for folks yes. that don't know who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you give us that uh, rundown? Yeah, um, I'm Shannon Mullins. I'm a Microsoft MVP of business applications. Uh, I work mostly on the Business Central side, Dynamics 365, and uh also work with CRM or D365 for sales. And uh, my background is actually uh, Great Plains, started with Great Plains about 20 years ago. I'm going to ask you about that. So when you say 20 yeah. years in dynamics, so yeah. back when the acquisitions happened and all that changed. So I'd love to hear some of that. Yeah, history. yeah, I'll, I'll explain that in just a second, uh, how I got started with Great Plains. But we, um, we actually um, are a Microsoft partner. I work with a company called Accelerant. Um, behind me, you'll see our Bela. We actually just changed names about uh, 30 days ago, and I haven't updated <laughs> my sticker on the wall. Um, but we are a Microsoft Dynamics and Security partner. We do a lot of uh, work around the Dynamics platform, as well as Azure and Sentinel um, and Defender with Microsoft Security. So uh, we've got a great security practice and uh, got some great partners I'm working with. So yeah, uh, very excited to be here. I'm actually based out of Nashville, Tennessee, um, but uh, anyone follows me on Twitter or uh, Instagram, they know I'm traveling pretty much all the time. So uh, life of an MVP kind of that uh, you know, pre COVID, as we were saying before we started, like I was a two to three events a month kind of schedule and just was constantly around the world and which is, you know, hey, good, good and bad, you know, uh, there, yeah. are, there are definitely some pros to that you know see a lot of beautiful parts of the world yeah last month i or uh, last week i was in denver and i was uh, actually wishing to be home in my own bed so i'm glad to be home this week and uh back out on the road with clients next week but it's uh it's been a fun life yeah a little bit about my um great plains background so i actually yeah. um was working in accounting while i was finishing my accounting degrees <clears throat> and i have two degrees in accounting one's a bachelor's and one's a master's and uh while i was getting and finishing my bachelor's degree, I started working in an accounting department who was moving from QuickBooks into Great Plains. And back then it was Great Plains. Um, and that was right around the time where Microsoft was starting to uh, buy the software. And uh, Great Plains was actually on not SQL based uh, servers. It was on pervasive and went through that whole transition, went through moving QuickBooks over to GP. And uh, interesting fact is that at that time, Microsoft Partners was actually doing that implementation. And the guy that was leading the implementation said, you know, you'd be really good at this consulting thing. You should consider it. And I said, oh, no, I could never, <laughs> never do that. I don't want to be on the road. I don't want to be teaching people all day long. Like, I don't, I don't think so. I think, you know, I want to be an accountant. You know, that's what I go to, went to school for. Um, and they kept in touch. I kept in touch with several of them. And then that came back up in a job uh, 10 years right afterwards where another consultant that was helping us at Great Plains said, you know, are you sure you don't want to go into consulting? And I thought, no. And, uh, about six years after that, when I decided to move to Charlotte, North Carolina, I was like, you know what? I really do like databases. I had gotten into SQL reporting and crystal reporting and decided, I think I might try consulting. And, uh, it was when my kids were much older, I could actually be traveling and, and do things that, you know, you need to do in the consulting world. But yeah, I started off with Great Plains and uh, taught myself, self-taught myself Business Central, um, which is, you know, based off Envision and Nav. And uh, similarities, I feel like they're two different worlds. Um, in fact, when I go back to Great Plains now, I feel like I went back to 1998 <laughs> and well, sitting were, back in front of the screen. Well, they were but really it's under Dynamics. I mean, there were really three very different <laughs> products, uh, you know, solutions that were under that banner. But it's, I mean, it's good to see we're seeing more MVPs from the Dynamics side kind of join in. And certainly there are a number that are within the business application space that are pure power platform side of things. So they may be productivity collaboration people that kind of found their way over that direction, but we're seeing more, it's just my observation. I don't have numbers to, to speak to, 
but of people that have that deep dynamics background and some of the history there that are starting to come over into become MVPs in some of these different areas. So I know that Microsoft, for those that aren't, don't know this, they, I mean, like I'm an office apps and services MVP. I started as a SharePoint. I moved to Office 365. Uh, then there was uh, office apps and servers, then became office apps and services. And so it evolves and changes and they, they'll shift things around based on a lot of those things as well. So like there was, I believe at one time, there was just like a Dynamics MVP, which mm -hmm. could, could have been anything underneath that. And now it's, I, I don't know if there's still Dynamics MVP. I don't think no, so. No, it's, um, it's business applications. And in fact, um, <clears throat> one of my MVP friends, who's actually an MVP of business applications for BC, she didn't even know if she was a BC MVP or a Power Automate MVP. And until we were at Directions EMEA, uh, she had Microsoft look it up and they have like your subcategory. But yeah. if you go on to the MVP portal, you can't tell like what speciality well, somebody is And you is can, because depending on the audience too, like sometimes I'll refer to myself as a SharePoint MVP if I'm talking with that crowd. That's what I started as. I still write about, still talk about that. But uh, you know, all the rest of the productivity things. So they they're actually because there used to be like an Excel MVP and a PowerPoint MVP and a OneNote kind of also those areas which are all now part of Office apps and services. And but Microsoft just said, you know, if you're comfortable saying, hey, I, I'm a you know a, a, a focused on CRM, so I'm going to be focused on that, or I'm I'm specifically Power Automate, and that's my focus. You can say Power Automate MVP, although it's business applications. So yeah. And honestly, you know, um, I do so much work in so many different applications now. I'm I'm really um, heavily focused. Most of my my uh, sessions I'm teaching at conferences this year are on the Power Platform with Dynamics with Teams. Um, I've really grown very very fond of Teams and its capabilities with SharePoint and um, leveraging those capabilities so much more within the Dynamic stack than we would have done it with Great Plains. I mean, that just wasn't something we did. Um, but now I feel like because Microsoft's connecting it all together, <laughs> who really cares? Though, if you're talking to a SharePoint MVP and you're talking to a Dynamics MVP, we're two different worlds, right? But our worlds kind of collide together at that that well, stage of refer to ourselves sharing as a, documents. A Microsoft MVP instead, and that's yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But so it's it is interesting good to see that Microsoft has been over the last you know two three years where it seems like Microsoft has really stepped up and doing, you know, investing in dynamics. It's coming more to the forefront. Why, why, what's with the change? What's, what, why finally? Was it because Satya owned a bunch of that before he became CEO? And so he just wanted to, to, to push on those, those areas? Or what do you, what do you think that yeah. shift has been? <clears throat> It's been an interesting uh, transition. So I'll tell you that uh, Microsoft kind of shook up this world about six, seven years ago at, um, I think it was Inspire. It was one of those events where they essentially sat down with the partners and said, you know, we're going to build a cloud-based ERP. Um, and back then at that point, it was, we were going to build it, right? We're going to start from scratch. We're going to build this product. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> the old w and I mean, coming, the world coming from people who have been doing this a long time, right? Yeah. We're going, why, why are you just building from scratch? Just take something you have, right? And it, it took them a while to get there. And it was very frustrating for about two years. Um, but when they finally got to Business Central and they decided NAV was going to be that base, <clears throat> and the vision was always a well-used, well-known product, um, moving it into BC and making it truly cloud to compete against NetSuite really was a game changer. Um, and I'll tell you what the game changing features are. So one is that compatibility with Office 365, right? We have that capability, we have that, um, you know, piece where we can create sales orders in Outlook, we can automatically store our files to OneDrive or SharePoint, we can send records in Teams, I mean, that capability that people are using the Office stack, now all of a sudden your ERP is embedded with it. Um, and then we got rid of VPNs. You know, VPNs were the bane of our existence, <laughs> still are the bane of our existence for on-prem clients and for the customers themselves, right? No one wants to have to VPN to RDP to connect, to get into a program. Now on my phone, my tablet, Anywhere I'm at, I have my ERP data and I can, you know, do almost everything that I need to do on those on those devices. So I feel like it, it's funny because I feel like the timing of Microsoft getting this product to the cloud and then COVID was just like the perfect accelerant 
yeah. I'll use our name, Accelerant, yeah, um, okay. to, cat to, to be that catalyst to just say, you know, we had IT companies calling us in 2020, we got to get off these VPNs, we got to get off these checks, we got to get off this on-prem software, right? This is a horrible situation we're in when we're working remote. Yep. And so I feel like really that's been the driver to get everyone to kind of push. And of course, NetSuite had gained a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of traction, but I feel like their software, because they started so early in the game in the 90s, the interface of it looks very 90s-ish, where Microsoft's coming out with a very modern cloud, looks very much like your office applications, you know, all of those different pieces, which just makes it so nice and flowing. And, and uh, it's just, it's a very, um, it was demoing at one time for a customer and they said, you know, we saw NetSuite, we thought it was like the, it was like the, the, the uh, what did he say? The, the uh, not very good with cars, but Corvette. So it's like the Corvette and he goes, but now you showed me, you know, Business Central, this is like the Ferrari. Like we've seen it's slick, it's smooth. And then, you know, usually what people want to know is what is the price point? And the price point is so ridiculously low right now for BC, it's insane. And they're like, what? I get all this for this price? I mean, it's really, it's a slick deal um, for how much ERP you're getting. So it's pretty nice. What's why it's growing so fast? I, I know you, you've got to run, you've got another another call, but one last question. It's, kind of, it's a bigger sure. question, but um, do you see you know, in, in your space with Microsoft Loop because you know every time you see like some of the scenarios that they that they you know do they 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 show kind of like an ERP interaction using Loop and getting real time. Yeah, you know. so I find it interesting. I saw a little bit about Loop. I wasn't able to attend a lot of the sessions at the conference, and so I saw people start to post about Loop and how exciting it is. I think it's going to be one of those slow adoptions. I mean, I feel like people are just getting to the point to adopting Teams with Dynamics. Um, I yeah. don't know if we necessarily need another product <laughs> because we have Teams now. Well, but see, that's so a, I, I agree with confusing. you as a standalone, but yeah. as an integrated, like I was actually, yeah. you know, as, as an integrated solution, I actually go back to, if you remember a few years back when Julia White did the demo of Gig Jam on stage at the partner conference, so like yep. five, six years ago, is where we saw that 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 loop type technology, real time, but of really <laughs> segregated content. And use the example of, you know, being able to pull something from the ERP. And we want to interact with this group of people around that data without showing them access to everything else around yeah. that. Just focus around yeah. that one, change it from different locations in real time, like that, you know, conceptually. Like just that was really inspiring, even though that demo was complete smoke and. Yeah, well, you know. that's how we felt about BC when it first came out. So <laughs> yeah. I'm Christian, I'm like, I'm not opposed to it, but I have to see real use cases. I think that uh, Microsoft is doing a really good job of moving towards more centralized processes within organizations. And that's a huge selling point for our CIOs, CTOs. You know, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. The people we're meeting with, they love it. So yeah. It's pretty well, great. I, I really appreciate your time today and getting some of the Absolutely. insights that you hear about this. Shannon, people want to find out more about you, get in touch. What are the best ways to reach you and find you? Yeah, so you can follow me on LinkedIn. Um, my my LinkedIn profile is at one at one Shannon Mullen one or look for Shannon Mullen's Microsoft MVP. I'm also on LinkedIn. And then uh, you can go out to our website, accelerant.com and uh, find me there. Excellent. Of course, you'll be able to find all this info if you're finding this via or listening and via podcast or finding on YouTube, then you go to buckleyplanet.com and I'll have all of her social links as well within a blog post there. So Shannon, thanks so much for your time and have a Absolutely. Great, great weekend. Thank you.